Hello there. Over these past few Halloween specials, I've looked at rip-offs and terrible movie licenses based on horror games. So for a change, I thought I'd look at a really good horror game. A survival horror game that's actually really, really good. As much as an oxymoron as it is, survival horror as a medium has been established in video games for well over two decades now. I mean, surely the purpose to survive is the premise of pretty much every video game. The genre's creation is popularly attributed to Infogram's 1992 release, Alone in the Dark, and later on to Konami's Silent Hill and seminal constantly walking into the walls with zombies simulator, Resident Evil, for making the concept popular. But the overall premise of survival horror has been around in gaming long before. Arguably, the very first example is the Sinclair ZX81 title, 3D Monster Maze, released in 1982. The epic story of a clown inviting you into a maze inhabited by a rather unintimidating dinosaur. Well, it was the early 80s, so give them some slack. It also spawned a pseudo slash remake on the Spectrum, where you're chased by a 3D legged Humpty Dumpty instead. There was even a renaissance in early horror games released in other countries a few years ago, too, such as Capcom's fantastic Japanese only Sweet Home for the Famicom, which in turn was partially the inspiration for Resident Evil itself. Deemed too gory for the West, it sadly languished in the gaming ether for decades until a band of translators made it playable for our Romanized eyeballs. But there was one game that encapsulated all of what made Sweet Home so acclimated, and made a year before even. In fact, it innovated a lot of elements that have been wrongly accredited to other video games over the years. Hi, I'm Guru Larry, and for this Halloween special, I take a look at quite possibly the most overlooked survival horror game of all time. Where Time Stood Still. Released on the 128K version of the ZX Spectrum, PC and the Atari ST, Where Time Stood Still is heavily inspired by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World and Edgar Rice Burroughs' The Land That Time Forgot, and has you playing as Jarrett, a guide and aeroplane pilot who has crash landed into a plateau uninhabited by man for millions of years. He's joined by newlyweds Gloria and Dirk, as well as Gloria's father Clive a ragtag band of survivors who can either help or hinder your progress. Now the object of the game is to make it through with your crew alive to the mountain pass far on the other side of the plateau. Of course this is no walk in the plateau to get from A to B, the huge landscape is covered in T-Rexes, pterodactyls and racially stereotyped cannibals. It's the only video game in history where you can be killed by a rather perturbed armadillo as well. Amazingly for its time, the three other characters each have their own personality, such as Dirk being the strongest of the group and has the ability to talk to natives. Gloria is the one who likes to keep her head down the most, so you least need to tend to her for hunger and tiredness, which I'll go into later, and Clive on the other hand is the stereotypical out for himself character, you know, the ones that end up suffering some kind of ironic grisly death from their own greed in movies. While he's the richest and can use his assets to trade with the natives for food and weapons, greed can get the better of him and he'll occasionally want to do his own thing. So it's up to you if you want to go Lara Crofting with him to keep him alive and take a share of the riches, or just tell him where to stick it. Keeping all three characters alive, while not essential, is highly advisable. Say if Gloria dies, Dirk loses all confidence and becomes a much less useful ally. And the other way around, if Dirk dies, Gloria will literally mourn at his body and become uncontrollable. So you can either be a heartless scumbag and abandon her in this state, or you can use the time to restock, searching for items or trading with the local village, and return to her later when she's finished grieving. Clive, on the other hand, seems to be the one that no one really gives a damn about. Mainly as he constantly complains about being hungry and his selfish attitude, so he's the least of your concerns. 
As long as you avoid villagers, however, who will take offence to you entering without offering some kind of gift. You can still complete the game missing one, or even all the other flight members, but it just makes the task that much more difficult. Each of the four characters has three meters you need to observe too. One for strength, one for hunger, and one for ammunition. These are mostly morale. If you ignore your team's tiredness and not let them rest at night, they'll become sluggish and eventually fall asleep in the most dangerous of places. And the food meter dropping will make them unresponsive, to the point they'll give up on the team and go their own way. So monitoring the team's morale is almost as important as keeping them alive. But one of the most unique things about where time stood still is whenever you play it, it's entirely random. And I don't mean the namby-pamby random you get in other video games where they just place items in different areas. The entire game is unexpected. You could play the game one time and not encounter any dinosaurs nor cannibals whatsoever. And another time, one of your party could be instantly killed by a rampaging T-Rex or a pterodactyl from out of nowhere. And depending on how hungry and or tired your party is, they can even decimate the entire team. Even a rope bridge you've crossed countless times in previous games will suddenly break under the weight of one of your party. You can see why later games abandoned total randomness in their playthroughs, as it could be considered unfair, as any video game should rely on skill to beat it, never luck. But the sole fact it will constantly keep you at your feet anticipating the unexpected does make the game that so much more tenseful. But here's me praising the game all these years later. What did our old chums of the 1988 gaming press think of where time stood still at the, um, time? Well, Sinclair User absolutely loved the game, giving it a whopping 96%, one of their highest ever rated games, stating, lock yourself in your room and prepare to play the most exciting game you've ever seen on the spectrum. Our old wacky pals at Ace gave it the usual nonsensical score of 719 out of 1000, but were thoughtful enough to also add a handy line graph indicating we might not enjoy it as much if we play it constantly for an entire year. And then summarised with the line, a game you'll enjoy playing until you complete it. Thanks chaps, your ability to point out the bleeding obvious bears no equal. And computer and video games, well, they got the entire name and the game wrong for starters, and then proceeded to maintain their journalistic professionalism by littering the review with terrible grammar, general sexism, and a rape joke. And then gave it 8 out of 10. Yeah, sorry Tony Dillon. I know you were trying to be funny with your review, but you really just come across as a complete tosser. It's a shame that Where Time Stood Still was never awarded the attention it so rightly deserved, but it always did have the odds stacked against it. Aside from it only ever being released in the UK, Germany and Spain, Denton Designs, the developer of the games, loved for memory hungry video games from their imagined software days, made Where Time Stood Still a whopping 1 to 8k, and the inability to make it a multi-loader due to the game being one massive map made it impossible to port to the Commodore 64 and Amstrad CPC, which were only 64k each. Denton has suggested to Ocean Software, the publisher, to port the game to the Commodore 128 and Amstrad CPC 6128, which did have 128k of memory, but the ultra-limited user base of both computers at the time made Ocean reluctant to port anything to them, so were ultimately cancelled. In 2014, a Commodore Amiga version was released by fan translators, but rather than a straight up port, the game was actually the Atari ST version being converted to the Amiga in real time. Some really clever programming. They also added some excellent remixes of the game's soundtrack to boot, which you've been listening to throughout this video. So what happened to the developer Denton Designs? Well, Where Time Stood Still was already a spiritual sequel to their copyright dubious but critically acclaimed World War II action game, The Great Escape. So they tried to make one more game in the trilogy with Wreckers, which is similar in tone to Where Time Stood Still, just heavily inspired by the Alien franchise this time and set on an abandoned space station. 
8 and 16-bit ports were developed and completed, and even reviewed by magazines, but sadly only the 16-bit versions were ever released. Denton went on to make a couple of other games, namely an Amiga port of Batman Returns and a couple of sports games, before being absorbed by Rage Software to develop games for the Gizmondo. So not quite the glorious ending for such an amazing development team. But where time stood still lacks in obscurity, it equally attains in originality. The Lost World setting alone is a hugely untapped environment for video games, even after all these decades later. And the more you play, the more you think to yourself, oh, it's a bit like that game, blah, only to remember it was released years later. If you're a fan of survival horror or survival management games in general, then Where Time Stood Still is a perfect example of both of these and well worth hunting down. But maybe, just maybe, Alone in the Dark's mantle of being the first modern survival horror game needs to be pushed back just a little more. <laughs> Thanks for watching this Halloween special. Luckily there's no such thing as real dinosaurs and I'm also filming it in my garden. Uh -oh. Hello again peoples. Thanks for watching this third Halloween special. Yeah I know I looked and sounded like a arsenic video, but I was right in the middle of an annoying flu bug when filming this unfortunately, but I do appreciate you watching this far. If you want to check out the previous two Halloween specials, the links are on screen now. Also, if you'd like to sub to me, or even help me make more episodes, that would be totally good for of you chaps. But thanks again, and I'll be seeing you next time. Before you ask, yes I am aware I did not cover Freddy Krueger Live this year. I cannot respond to every single email about this, so let me make this absolutely clear. Halloween specials have no set schedule.